yeah whatever so we're having a discussion and um that discussion is just going and going so please go check out the previous parts to gauge your bearings you guys everything is just whatever in this 21st century i literally don't care about anything i'm going home that's like a clarity it's I'm, I'm, oh. by home i mean the rapture like that's happening i'm going home and when i'm there you're gonna be like oh snap i was singing billy jean i was gonna can is not my son uh oh there goes the random lack of decorum i have lost all of my genteel and i don't care and in and i'm not but i'm going home guys because nothing matters anymore nothing really matters please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings the last part i ended by explaining that parents have literally all throughout the ages following having read from plato plato of which had this like to say that kids are frankly unsustainable to be kept in the state because they're just destroying they're riotous they're moody and they're full of disbehavior and there's nothing we can do tomorrow uh, for these randos so let's just shut the earth already let's close it let's seal the deal let us close the centuries because there is literally nothing left plato said that in like the fourth century bc or something uh, and it's still out here rolling this concern so one might be like crabs like there's no difference like it's been intense all this time don't make it deep and i'm like i'm sorry no it is deep you know why because individuals on the planet have always delegated parenting not always sorry for many generations individuals ever since organized religion and ever since organized uh education ever since all systems that was you know structured systems that were erected for the better functioning of the human race some of which i will give kudos to because who does not love trade and industry who who all right these systems that have given us all routines that are predictable from the time we come out of our mother's wombs that we're going to go to school for a couple of years and then after that we're going to work some jobs for a couple of hours in a day go home watch some tv read a newspaper sleep and then do the same thing pretty much for the rest of your life um on a loop mm, that whole thing has given the human race and routine and you know what routine is important you can't hate it or you can't just throw it under the bus and say whatever rubbish nonsense otherwise we would not have thrived like this we would not have amassed for ourselves all of these billions of people on the planet we would not have prospered as a human race to be fruitful and multiply so really we did need that kind of burgeoning of the human race the growth in numbers that was important that was god's plan all along he wanted to uh, gather for himself a people for his own possession but with every innovation awarded humankind by god to thrive on the earth there are all these like infiltrations of wickedness that always come in there are all these infiltrations of insensitivity that always creep their way into this ecosystem however anomalous they might be mm. and so people manage to find a, a way to be diabolical when something is under normal circumstances quite good there's always these exploiters there's always these extreme users and abusers on a, of a system there's always these people who are always trying to find loopholes in a system and so they really mess it up they really mess it up and when you create a system for people to live in i'm so distracted yes like it when you find a system for people to live in uh individuals will then take for granted things like if at all people are reliant on a system and you threaten some with extraction from the system they then can be controlled with the system if at all that system is one that is absolutely needed for them to get through so they get us addicted to a structure routine do you understand what i'm saying and then politicize it and extract or humiliate certain people out of this ecosystem purely because they don't obey a narrative and so that's how you socially condition a mindset a rhetoric groupthink that's where it comes in where most of the people belong to the system and it is comfortable it is routine it's what works and then they extract people if they don't want to obey certain changes in ideology and that's when everything just starts to fall apart and crack and that is the difference between 4th century bc plato days and now we have had all these industrial revolutions all these years down the line thanks to the erection of these systems that have kept us going and going and going trade industry education religion that is organized right going to church on a particular day have fellowshipping with certain people in order that you might feel like you're part of a group yeah things that historically used to be done very individually in families that were nuclear kept together by i guess the patriarch they're in and maybe the village that had like perhaps like um a one particular mindset like a chief you know uh or a king 
that had one particular mindset and so this sort of kind of filtered down into individual families on the ground and everybody was maintained in a particular stand when you've got all these different opinions all across society like as in everybody has a different idea as to what is right or wrong the whole chieftaincy um hierarchy is no longer sustainable it is no longer a, you know like you can't tell me what to believe you can't tell me what to think because i don't inherently believe in what you believe and then when you give people a right and a freedom to basically believe in what it is that they believe in there then are all these leg rooms awarded people to believe what they want to believe in so far as you know they don't hurt anybody while they're doing that believe what you want to believe in so far as you don't hurt anybody because now we are no longer members of a tribe we are no longer members of a kingdom we are now members of a democracy and when then you are members of a democracy uh the disquieting thing about that is that in the democratic in the democratic country that you live in they may they literally at any given time might be millions of differing opinions in the streets apart different from yours and different from your children's and you can't make war with them successfully without appearing like a bigot without appearing like a dogmatic buffoon without appearing intolerant and so therefore you just gotta mum yourself shut up and uh, uh, take in your stride that your opinions are different in so far as that difference is inside uh, sorry it's out there and not inside your households and for years we have somehow prospered to perhaps rear children in individual households to believe in those individual households ideologies at the expense of the world when they go out there so that they can always basically stand for something that they might not fall for everything seeing as there are all these different ideologies that are competing with one another in the world but then in a world where parents are delegating that responsibility to teach ideology to children to teachers we are dealing with just a cesspool of confusion it is cantankerous and everything goes do what thy wilt for that is the whole of the law and so when you give your child over to a system to be taught do you understand that is a mix masala of all of these ideologies and you don't put your foot down in your household your kid is gone your kid is gone 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 but you see we're growing up in a society where parents themselves were just thrown they became they were the kids that are now parents and they were thrown into ideologies and they are now far more loose than their parents ever could be parents have always thrown their children to the system as a babysitter like that's what i'm trying to explain to you guys it is not easy to raise a child okay i wish i had autonomy and I, I do have autonomy to a certain extent but what i wanted to say my, was my own place i i just you know my train of thought is always so distracted by so much activity around me where it is that i stay and i'm always so paranoid and insecure about speaking my mind without losing my bearings because i'm concerned for being eavesdropped on i hate my life but nonetheless we continue anyway to speak that which we all speak um what in the world under heaven do i need to do over here i forgot what i used how could i forget how could nah that was the one that i used sorry i can't multitask y'all guys know that that's like a whole thing look parents have always delegated like yo in my generation and generations prior to that systems societies are not new they have not been innovated just day before yesterday they've been around for centuries and whatever society it is that your child is and these societies however sorry whatever society let me just finish that sentence whatever society your child has been raised in they will likely follow suit that they might be part of a whole and not be human beings are born with a say with a desire for belonging guys and so they won't naturally just gravitate away from being part of the grain if at all it is in their power to do so they won't choose to be ostracized they will choose to be popular they will choose to be loved embraced accepted uh, so they will more than likely always accept societal norms as their own they will take them whether or not they make sense is irrelevant because it's about fitting in and that fitting in thing was at some point okay <laughs> because societies were sober the world was sober people were sober the world was not the crazy menace that it is today but then it has become a menace hasn't it that is proliferating only certain agendas using the systems that we have all come to rely on so violently and these systems are becoming increasingly pagan hostile to the gospel they're becoming increasingly unfriendly to those who have who maintain dogmas as their ideologies mm. that's what's good religious dogma is becoming increasingly unpopular yeah so uh christian judeo mindset is increasingly getting squeezed out of society and that's problematic because literally there's only one way to heaven 
hey yo i'm not trying to go and bite anybody's toes off uh in offending them but bottom line is the gospel is kind of offensive so long story short i changed my mind i am trying to offend you there's no other way a name under heaven by which men must be saved that name is jesus christ and so if you try and take christianity out of the earth you're literally condemning an entire planet to hellfire and you're also making it very hard for those who are trying to evangelize anyone that wants to be evangelized for god you're making it really hard for people to make a choice for christ by making christianity the ostracized norm you are making Christianity the thing that gets you banished from a society, from a, civil a civilization, the thing that gets you kicked out. It used to be the immoral woman that got kicked out of a village. It used to be the wayward kid that was ostracized and kept out of the playing circle with other children. But now it is the right people. Wrong is called right. Right is called wrong. Good is evil. Evil is good. You get my point. Yeah. And if you're kicking out religion, especially Christianity, out from like society you're literally condemning children and not only are you condemning them but you're making it really hard for those that would have chosen redemption to choose redemption because it's just so hard to be a christian like i'll give you an example apparently there are a whole bunch of palestinians that want an alternative to islam they're in gaza because they find it suffocating it has brought war onto their doorsteps the na in the name of Allah they disrupted a peace that wasn't broken but they try to fix it and now Israel has gone to war with them and they're being displaced they're being sent to the north of the country or of the strip it's just problematic for them and they're looking for an alternative to what do you call this to Islam right and this one evangelist guy was uh, trying to give them the gospel as a result of realizing that these people are looking for an alternative to Islam so thank God they're not looking for they're not abandoning god altogether they're not telling they're not becoming atheistic because they are embittered by what allah did to them they are like god does definitely exist but i need something other than islam i need an alternative and so there is this like one evangelist Oki that is trying to reach them for jesus and these people are like look i would take christianity i would because i have seen how well it works in western nations i've seen the peace they have there i have seen it but first i need to be guaranteed safety to turn to christ as soon as it's safe enough for me to turn to christianity i'll consider it i'll consider it what i'm trying to explain to you guys is that when you severely disincentivize turning to jesus in any given geographical location you make it hard for people to choose the only way that they have to life you make it very hard for people to choose jesus so when you intensify the, the difficulty to avoid hellfire what in the world and the heaven must be done with you though like what, what do we need to do like what, what do we need to do with you hey you like are just standing in front of the doors of heaven preventing people from coming in because you make it hard for them to live when they choose heaven you make it worse and worse yeah that's what's good and with societies becoming increasingly nihilistic yeah they are disincentivizing exhausted people that want god just in so far as if i choose him please can i just live it can i just live why can't we all just get along can i just go to school come back can i just go to work and come back can i just sleep in my bed at night without imagining that somebody's gonna drop a uh you know a molotov cocktail into my bedroom because i just so happened to have turned from, you know from whatever it is that i was doing to christ like can i just be left alone and if at all they continue that are increasingly disincentivizing people from turning to jesus by creating a pagan society that frowns on christian judeo, judeo principles um y'all you are creating condemned souls that might have responded to christ if your societies weren't so messed up so now how do you strengthen the heart of a child growing up in a society that hates jesus yo ain't no better comfort in the life of a child than their mama and their dad literally there is power in parents that they just don't understand they've got power to shield some kids like they've got power to make children feel like it's literally not that bad it can't be that intense like yeah like parents have been given power by god to cause all of the blows coming from the outside world to pale and appear like nothing just a breeze in the face of a child that would have come back home wet with sorrow because they were bullied and if however they've got this like buffering effect this shock absorber at home it's enough to keep this kid standing firm on what they believe on what they believe however if your parents in and of themselves were tossed to and from by every wind of societal doctrine i shame there's nothing that can be done for your babies like parents have been for a minute they've been doing it i frankly personally in and of myself can vouch for this because it happened with me they've been delegating their responsibility to rear children to teachers they've been delegating it to teachers 
you understand for the longest time but there was a time historically that's what i'm getting at where there was no organized systemic education there was a time when children from naught all the way up until whatever age they left their mothers and fathers houses to go and marry other people to go and marry men and women out there they were taught everything they know by their mothers their fathers and their older brothers and sisters they were taught inside the house and so ideologies tended to sort of kind of be kept in a bunch in that vacuum it was only when organized schooling came on board that now parents felt like this is exhausting i'm tired like it's rough to be a mom as soon as a baby is born it's just so much work like all these people all over the show i would know that are very broody they long for a child but a lot of women as soon as the baby has been born there's so much exhaustion that comes with it there's all that tending to this human being that is entirely needed by you they are 100 percent needed by you they cannot be neglected otherwise they will die and it just takes so much fun out of life especially if you've got postpartum depression it, it makes that, that, that baby become such a massive responsibility that you realize that I wanted it, but yo, this is hard. And just the prospect of doing that for like another, like 18 years, for 18 years straight, 19, 20 years, 21 years, depending on how long this kid is going to stay in your house, depending on how long this kid is going to also develop autonomy while growing up in your house such that it becomes easier for you as a mother to be a mother or as a father to be a father it at some point gets easier because kids learn autonomy and so it becomes less burdensome but until you have gotten them to that place of autonomy it's a lot of work it's a lot 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 of work and so since women discovered that oh guys there's a system there's a schooling system some very intelligent people came up with a grade system they came up with a way to teach children from standard from grade naught to grade 12. they came up with a way and these kids get taken to these schools for like many hours a day many hours a day and then they come back only later i have to only worry about picking them up later that's what's good so i mean like this is free time i bet when these systems of education started being introduced in countries parents were like what so i i get to literally have what like eight hours five seven hours off i guess seven hours off and so they were grateful to give these kids to the system for that time when they're at school while the mothers in and of themselves were in systems now the fathers were in systems now they were working jobs and industry that also was burgeoning so all these routines that were given to the human race look i i respect routine make no mistake like i in and of myself have survived years of solitude and isolation and lots of sorrow lots of want lots of lack because i came up with a system i came up with a routine routine works it really works to keep a person from just twiddling their fingers and wasting themselves away it works swimmingly like a well-oiled machine so i'm not going to take away from the human race that particular baby however it came with some pr pretty dirty bath water the kids were sent off to school and they were trained education a b c d e f g by these systems it would have been great if your kids were only being taught one two three a b c but once everybody adopted these systems and it became a societal norm and so therefore a need in society it became something that apart from it we would all fall apart we wouldn't know how to raise these children we wouldn't know how to yeah etc that's when they started to infiltrate stupid ideologies like filthy politics that's when they started to try and train your children to become militants for a particular destructive rhetoric and that is when souls of men started to just plunge into hellfire one after the other due to helping some pretty filthy politicians that are juicing the system to get children to do their bidding and so the future gets shaped by training these children very young a dumb 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 way of thinking a very dumb way of thinking and these schooling systems became so convenient for parents that they made a decision to in, in increasing numbers stop homeschooling and just give their kids to the systems give their kids to the systems give their kids to the sisters to the systems and with more and more kids leaving home i mean there was a time when there was a healthy balance or a competition between homeschooled kids and kids in the system but now most kids of the planet are taught by the system meaning that essentially these system kids far outnumber and so therefore are a mightier army than homeschooled kids in south africa so much so is that an issue with there being more children in the main system than in homeschools that there was a bill proposed 
some years ago that was resisted i don't know if at all there was a town hall did where it is that they were trying to block this bill from being made law because it was just so freaking taboo it was just ridiculous like guys uh, what uh one woman who was a parent and i believe she was also a teacher was also lamenting right she was speaking about how it is that this bill basically listen to this right was trying to introduce I'm speaking like this. was trying to introduce um it was trying to force all children in in prime from from a part like literally from from and okay so with homeschooling even if you homeschool your kids grades your child's grades your child's passing and being moved from one grade to another still has to be approved by the state it still has to be approved by the system so you can't independently homeschool and then come and be like hey my kid is grade 12 level when there's no proof that this kid was grade 12 level so at the end of the day even home schools are regulated by governments and yeah that led that said banked they were basically introducing a whole bunch of sexuality into the schooling curriculum they were trying to get children injected with the serum of 2020 and if at all they did not want to take the injection they could not essentially participate in the school year in a way that the government would acknowledge they have passed they were trying to force the injection down the throats of children even if they were in homeschooling and in terms of the homeschooling curriculum they wanted to basically teach some new abortion laws to children 12 years and under saying that at 12 years and under you can have an abortion without your parents consent and you can have sex without and you, you you have a right to sex education from as early as five years old and that it, it and that children as early as five years old need to be encouraged to partake in masturbation so that they can be taught their own sexuality i'm not even lying go and look it up on youtube go and google it and when you read this bill certain people when they read it they were like uh uh-uh, we cannot let this pass they were trying to force this down the throats even of listen to this homeschooling parents and said that if you don't embrace this in homeschooling that's why south africa is dead this country is dead like i saw the lord showed me it's going to even cease to be a country it is under severe judgment like imagine like even in homeschooled children they were to be trained from the age of five sexual liberty sexual liberty in the art of masturbation what does that have to do with literally anything what does that have to do with anything why in the world did they choose age five somebody tell me when freud's Aish, i want to know when castration anxiety and penis envy happens in the psychosocial maybe they based it on that i don't know but like freud was not jesus that's all i'm getting at all right uh, i think that is called the phallic phase right phallic phase uh of psychosexual development three to six makes sense it's from three six three to six years old it just came to me but then again it didn't just come to me the holy spirit is the one that reminded me the phallic stage uh, where i did psychology when i was in school y'all uh but everybody trying to act like i didn't study okay let me just read it to you all right uh phallic stage which is the third stage the first one i believe is like the oral phase then anal then fel- phallic okay uh stage three uh three to six years old phallic uh, genitalia this is perhaps the most controversial stage of freud's psychosexual development this is the stage in which the child begins to experience pleasure associated with their genitalia so likely they had some pagan psychologists uh counseling the government telling them that children anyway at the age of around three to six are curious about genitalia in the phallic phase of freud's psychosocial stages of childhood development there is something called penis envy and castration anxiety so girls develop a penis envy because they notice that their dads have penises and their boy um, what is this boy brothers like boy siblings also have it and then they recognize that they've got they're flat right and that causes them jealousy like an envy where it is that they are like but why don't i have the protuberance why don't i have that phallus in front of you uh why why does dad have this and why does mom not have it and why uh, and uh, and why does my brother have it and i don't have it why do like boys so they experiment with each other show me yours and i'll show you mine that's when they start to experiment with stuff like that at that age 
penis envy castration anxiety and if they develop a fixation to these stages some uh, like just a, m a myriad of controversial issues could come up a myriad of problems could rock up later on in life so they have got to pass through this phase successfully in order for them to not develop a fixation the fixation of which might create like you know maybe even things like gen gender dysphoria <laughs> guys yeah, i see anyway whatever but gender dysphoria is not something that freud ever you know postulated but it doesn't matter because these things have foundations and so likely a lot of these crazy people on the left with the gender dysphoria ideology or mindset or rhetoric or this thing that they're pontificating likely it st stems from these foundations these these rudimentary psychologists these theorists of old they are taking from them right and with boys there is something called castration anxiety where it is that because the girl uh in what is this envies them the, the no what is this they make an observation that they've got a protuberance in the way that the girl is kind of flat they make an observation like on their mother on their mothers who bath with their own children and they see that women or little girls don't have what it is that they have down below and then they start to get anxious that they're going to lose it they start to get anxious so that's castration anxiety that it's going to get cut off because the girl envies it and the boy has it so it's the trophy for the day and again if you develop like a fixation to castration anxiety that's like issues that then develop like later on in life producing like psychological problems with emasculation and blah blah whatever like really and truly very fascinating idea I, uh, what is this theories these when you study them but really if you take them too seriously you're gonna get hurt because really at the end of the day the truth the foundation of what it is that we ought believe comes from the bible and it's clear that men must love wives the way that christ loved the church and women must respect husbands like it's just that basic and if you try to justify your misogyny on your castration anxiety you're not being biblical and if you also try to uh, justify your desire to coup a man's authority and not submit you under heaven cannot say that you've got penis envy what you've got is just an unruly disposition against the god of the universe you are using psychology to explain away your sinful nature and on that day you just need to repent or perish like it's that basic okay so i would imagine that that bill was premised around counsel by psychologists out here in these streets telling the government that children have a phallic phase from three to six and so that's when they're really curious about their sexuality and that's when they start to look at innies and outies and we need to not uh, resist this we, we we cannot uh what is the word that i'm looking for we we cannot block them from studying their sexuality because if they develop a fixation to the phallic phase of childhood development it could create issues in the future for these children that are psychological so we need to basically create an environment for them in the ed curriculum in the education space that oh guys yes and these people it's just diabolical it's nefarious yeah we need to create a climate for them where it is that they can explore their sexuality entirely within this phallic phase that they might be able to move on beautifully from it without developing a fixation so that we can basically build some pretty beautiful children for the future that don't have insecurities envies who basically yeah you get my point let them experiment let them experiment during this stage of psychosocial development according to freud and so they it like literally slipped its way it's like a nefarious grubby pause into south african legislation are you trying to propose a bill to help five-year-old girls and boys just masturbate in peace yeah of course like some people came up against it i don't ever since then know what's happened but it's such things as these like in the schooling system out here your child is being told taught masturbate like they're telling your children masturbate they're trying to make them feel like it's okay to do when it is actually a shameful act it's a sin against god self-control a city without walls that's what it's written in god's word that a man without self-control is like a city without walls anything can break into it like you're like a ro a bear rogue one robbed of your cubs if you cannot teach your children self-control to not be experimenting with boys genitalia if you cannot be teaching your girl children if you do not teach your boy children to also not want to look at the you know what's in the panties of the girl in school if you do not cast shame and rightly put biblical understanding in the heart of a child concerning that behavior fornication is just five seconds away like it's that basic like it's literally that basic and we cannot be embracing children out to having so much sex that at the age of 12 the government has seen it fit to give them abortions and peace without parents knowing like just imagine that like your 12 year old child having an abortion without you knowing that they've that they're even having sex i mean do you know the psychological damage of an abortion let alone not even understanding that you've just partook in like you know birds and bees like what in the world and even you don't understand what you have just done you literally almost created a human being and then you just got rid of it what could be the ramifications of that and if there is no mother there to basically comfort a child after having gone through such a traumatic experience as an abortion 
you, you you're dealing with childhood suicide and south africa is already let's just put that out there number two second to no one but russia in rates of suicide like it's already one of the most suicidal countries in the world and it is out here trying to push 12 year old girls to have abortions without mom or dad knowing anything just hold it as a secret by yourself and cry all by yourself in a bed and when your kid has committed suicide you then wonder what happened like i, I don't even understand what happened with my little girl Kantungwanatengi has had an abortion. That was what bill was being proposed in this nefarious country. I told you South Africa is this thing that's straddling the fence. It stands with countries that are enemies of God, but it also stands with countries like America with their woke agenda. South Africa's woke, but it also stands with countries that hate wokeism, like China, like Russia, like, uh, what is this? It stands with, with like Iran. South Africa is like allied with nations like those. If at all those nations had any say on South African politics, they would disagree altogether. But South Africa's out here waving a Palestinian flag, even though none of the stuff that they do down here would ever fly, ever fly in Gaza. Like it never, like it's just that basic. Like they are literally straddling the fence. And if you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. That's why this country's crashing and burning fast and furious. It's literally that basic. Anyway, moving on. I, bru I, I bruised myself over here. That's what in the world under heaven it is. That was, um proposed just some months ago maybe a year exactly is when it is that i heard this on youtube in south africa i don't know if it has since passed i severely doubt it um if it or not nah, doubt it like look not without resistance but we'll see i don't know i'm not even trying to research it guys i literally avoid south african news like the plague because i always get hurt when i'm all up in that grill because i'm like why why is he what like, i'm such an outlier like i'm, I'm a, such a sore thumb in this country like, everything it's politics everything this africa is has just made a decision to antagonize everything i am when i was born here can you spit me out even more can you whatever do you take whatever you want to take and just like really od on some drugs south africa i don't care i, I just don't care at this point let's move past that all right that bill that it was proposed in this country with those kinds of ludicrous stipulations that by the amazing grace of god there were enough people that were like hardy but you know we're not doing this mm, type establishment thing is the very thing that i'm talking about where it is that ideologies that are politicized in the worst way trying to wreak a handsome amount of havoc in the purity of children infiltrate their way into the schooling system and if at all you create a majority of all of the scholars in your land belonging to the system you then are going to also pressurize and coerce um homeschool kids that bill was passed to pressurize even homeschooling kids to basically obey so when you're like a christian parent which is what i would have been okay and you are just told by the government that we're not going to pass your kid unless they partake in a sex education at the age of five that tells them masturbation is okay what the heck they're literally putting you in a corner they make it impossible for you to be christian they are disregarding your rights to a freedom of religion they are disregarding what it is that any religious text has to say about sex before marriage especially with minors especially within the minor space like yeah that, that's what this country is literally trying to pontificate and as with him like nilana don't know how i was born here like somebody please tell me give me another flag like please like paint me another flag create a brand spanking you one and put me on the moon but i don't want to be in south africa then again i also don't want to be on the planet and i'm leaving very soon so let's just put that out there mm. i'm leaving anyway whatever given that that's like a whole thing this like just handing over handing over Nkariki, a last will in testament and estate after somebody has passed away your children to the system my goodness call it like condemnation much like what r.i.p vibes it's giving cadaver like a can deal mm -mm. all of this like rest in peace notioning like motioning of your children into the abyss i was gawking like flatly into it at some point on some maybe I, maybe the lord is gonna make me like sarah you know actually you're giving birth to a baby all up in my geriatric years but like at the end of the day why would the lord make out of me usara when sarah even if she chooses to be a homeschooling mom is still subjugated to the tyranny of teaching children the ideology of satan hey but i gotta leave south africa somebody please get me out of here then again i gotta leave the earth altogether anybody got of like you know helicopter i don't know give me aeroplane give me spacecraft anything give me spacesuit then i'll find my way from there really i'll pray once i'm in the sky there in the heavens and i'll be like lord it would be really great if you just kind of you know scooted me shooted me catapulted me up up in a way like buzz lightyear into heaven because like really there's no place left for me in the universe because i've been kicked out of look planet earth over there it's like a circle in the sky i see it from your vantage point now i'm in outer space and i have no way to go they've literally painted me a flag after i made that analogy they called my bluff and now i've got this funny looking flag in outer space and i see the earth is like a circle out there can i just come home already 
let me go to heaven. I mean, I don't know what heaven's flag would look like, but I got one. And South Africa has painted it thinking that it ain't Jack. Mm. I'm going to heaven because your kids have got larynxes that sound like AI bots. Not doing it. There's nothing here that is salvageable. I'm sorry. Everything is deadbeat and zombified. Hey guys, it's a zombie apocalypse. I apologize. We're not doing this. But it appears we are. If at all, parents have got a history of just throwing Abantwana Babo to the system to be reared there, nannied there, taken care of. If they've given over their responsibilities as parents to train children and instruct them in the way that they should go over to schooling, uh, then I guess we're all in a little bit of a bad bunch, are we not? If you look as well at the fact that once these parents have thrown, okay, so first they threw their parent, their, their children into the schooling system, discovered it was a free babysitter. Well, not free, it's actually paid, but it's a babysitter. They discovered that it's a babysitter for a couple of hours a day. Yeah, they then, upon these children getting back home, and these women and men also in and of themselves being exhausted at the end of the day, and so being t too tired to now be a real parent to these kids, they, they could not then supplement what under heaven happened in the school. They can't supplement it. First of all, they're not asking children what happened today in school that you imagine is of concern. Anything that you feel as if though perhaps might be different from what I'm teaching you at home. Uh, no extra education, no one hour too, that you are awarding children just to basically infiltrate and instill whatever it is that is your core ideology. Nothing is a, a, a beeping radar dee, 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 that's just going off in the head and the heart of a child in school when they're being taught rubbish. When these children are being taught rubbish, nothing is picking up this bleep on their radar so they can take it home and be like, mom, this is what I learned at school so that the mother can squeeze it out so they can crush it, maybe change schools. I don't know. All they do is just basically say, do your homework and make sure it's done. That's all they monitor. Do your homework, make sure it's done. But as for actually gauge the politics of the school, what was said, what was done, what ideology was being pro proliferated by other children, what other kids were trying to induct your own child into. Checking on that, ain't nobody other doing it. And I personally can vouch for how I was raised by teachers. In other words, they were the only adults out here telling me, bank left, bank right, walk straight, walk back, single file, keep quiet, this is how I'm going to judge you, bad child, for not doing homework. Teachers were the only ones instilling discipline in my life. At home, all that I, I guess, wasn't subjugated to the tyranny of was being yelled at if I didn't wash the dishes, all that jazz, but actually train an ideology, a rhetoric. Goodness gracious, guys, if you don't give a child an ideology, somebody's gonna give it to them. Children have got to have ideologies. You, you cannot say that they're too young to be politicized or given a dogma. Children have got to be given a dogma or one will be given them. They've got to be given a dogma or one will be entrenched one way or another. Understand, this liberal movement is a dogma because everybody that agrees against it is persecuted. If at all a person cannot be free to not choose something, it's dogmatic. And that's exactly what's going on in the world right now. So you either entrench your dogma into your child or somebody else is going to do it. Somebody gotta have something to stand for. And a lot of what is being stood for today is absolutely nothing. It's hollow, not an ash, but nothing is still a dogma. Because somebody that rocks up with something in the presence of nothing is going to be considered different, anomalous, a threat to peace, and so worthy of being eliminated. That's what I'm getting at. And your children are being knocked into the kingdom of darkness on the daily because of parents that imagine teachers or schools are going to teach them a dogma. Except teachers are not, like I said, psychiatrists. They're not doctors that are belong to a pediatric elective in their, medic, in their medical degrees. They're just teaching children one, two, three, A, B, C. However, in the one, two, three, A, B, C, every so often there are subjects in the school that are retraining your children how to think. There are facts that are being changed on the daily to be truth. And on top of that, these kids belong to a generation of other kids whose parents do not believe in what you believe in. And just to fit in, seeing as children are so impressionable, they will gravitate away from your thing that you're doing or you're hoping to proliferate in favor of that evil thing. And so we are dealing with millennials who have, like I said, bombed crashes. Mm. 
we're dealing with millennial parents that are out here just allowing like they're literally just allowing this licential this licentious generation of extremely sexually charged young men and women that are violently obsessed with themselves on social media producing videos that if at all you produced that kind of video in 1995 2003 and your mother done found it on facebook you are done for you are done for some of the videos that these kids are uploading with the lack of clothing that is on their bodies if at all we as millennials were to be found doing that anywhere by parents or by older brothers we would get a talking to maybe even a whooping a whooping do you understand what i'm saying yeah uh, yet however now i don't even know how tiktok is as gargantuan as it is it is mammoth with people's daughters that are under the age of 18 albeit claiming to be 18 and up literally doing um like a a diet version of only fans on tiktok just like a diet only fans seeing as on tiktok i don't believe anyway unlike twitter where people show full frontals anyway whatever i don't believe tiktok allows nudity to the nth degree they're five seconds away from doing only fans as their basic and these kids are being salivated after by these like incredible perverts all across the planet and they're somebody's daughters and sons and there is no way that your daughter can be so world famous and you not know as a mom there is no way that your daughter's got two million followers on tiktok and you don't know it's just it's impossible it's social media your kid if at all they end up getting two million views not views followers on tiktok is going to be stitched on tiktok they're going to be uh clipped on youtube they're going to be in compilations all over the show that you if at all you use social media which you highly likely do especially if you're a millennial uh to basically just pass the day and also to do your own job you will inevitably come across a viral video if anything, when you go on the landing page of YouTube, if you have not logged into your own account, it always publishes viral videos that you want nothing to do with. Only you train the algorithm what to recommend to you, but before you have trained it, it'll just give you whatever it is that everybody's doing. And so if your kid is that trending rando, that's what's good, then you are inevitably going to happen upon it as a parent. And if it is not you that is happening upon it, it is the whole neighborhood, because who does not like to gossip, especially among women? Yeah. Have you seen her child? She's busy chatting on TikTok. Have you, have you, have you, have you? all over the show so this information is going to return to the mother's ears but that's just an uncomfortable thing parents don't want their kids poor at least i would imagine largely they don't want their kids poor and so when your 16 17 year old child is out here making like a whole bunch of money from very licentious content on social media that's when these parents then shut up they go mom they go mom they keep quiet they let their kids basically commence a career because it's very hard to break it into um these industries out here also there is an epidemic of basically emancipation by these children from their parents because parents are saying no why would a kid want to be emancipated from a good parent a good mom a good dad it is because they imagine that it is okay for them to not have their parents and have friends for them to not have their parents and have each other have society that loves them have a social media following that loves them they have no regard for what the parents feel precisely because their parents basically threw them to sharks and say raise my child if at all the world was your kid's parent what under heaven incentive does your kid that's now blown up on tiktok and you do you disagree with all of their bad buttocks on social media if you disagree it does not matter because you taught your child extra family that is not you and so when you don't approve they just break away from you they just break away so it's one of two things that happen with the social media issue it is either that um parents approve because kids are making money or parents don't approve and so kids break away and these kids break away because parents have been throwing these kids to the system to raise them and so now they more recognize a parent out of the system than they do out of their moms and dads and it, it is therefore not so much of a loss nothing to write home about really when their mothers and fathers are literally trying to pull them back from the darkness so millennials i can't say this enough you've literally gone on right ahead and thrown like a whole bomb into the gen alpha crashes maybe even a couple of them in gen z crashes and unless these kids wake up by themselves they're essentially screwed it's literally over before it started why because their parents were dumb their parents were like my generation that refused for people like me to have children and therefore show all of y'all an example of what parenting actually looks like yeah you refused me that opportunity and then you went on right ahead and threw your children to the public schooling system maybe even private schooling system and expected teachers to do what you were supposed to do teachers taught abc one two three according to the government's curriculum that's what they were supposed to do they went to school to employ that knowledge that's all that they were supposed to do yours was to double check 
basically against your own dogma your own rhetoric in the house if at all once the kid comes back home from school what's going on then there are those that uh, imagine that this is a big enough epidemic it's a big enough challenge an issue a problem in my child's life that i'm gonna quit my job and i'm gonna homeschool my own kids yeah the ones who homeschool are a small number they're still vastly outnumbered but look at how it is that the system has so flourished and grown it has become so mainstream and so excited widely accepted that it is now literally pompous enough to all up in everybody's grill how arrogant are you dictate now to even homeschooling parents what to entrench as a dogma in their children as you're trying to make five-year-olds masturbate or not be passed because at the end of the day you can teach your child how to do logarithms at the age of three but i get to determine if at all they move from one grade to the next as the government and if you do not take if you don't basically embrace this here as what it is that i say is the dogma not the, not dogma but the curriculum you can't pass your logar your logarithmic spitting like two-year-old you can't pass them even if they're like a whole prodigy, they're like a whole genius. It doesn't matter because I make the rules. I'm Frank Sinatra. And guess what, little homeschooling mama? I'm doing it my way. Proper. South Africa's like Raccoon City. This country's like Raccoon City, I promise you. In Resident Evil, it is an experimental hub. I don't know what's going on here. But we are like, we, we, we like, we're like the first experiment in Africa to belong to the New World Order. I'm just saying. This country's just rubbish. I'm throwing it out. It's like a dirty sneaker. It smells. Yanga, huko. But this nonsense in South Africa and also this nonsense that I'm making an observation of in the planet has got me being like, okay, fine. So what if I am Sarah? Okay. With Abraham all up in my grill. Mm. After having a baby as a geriatric. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, God does miracles, but like, would he want to? That's my question. Would he want to employ that miracle in my particular ecosystem? Would he? Why would the Lord? want me to be out your raising turn up in the admonition of the lord forced a curriculum down my throat by a south african apostate government the government of which is pro-palestine let's just put that out there they hate israel and then over and above hating israel they are just hating my christian judeo principles that i am trying to instill in my babies because my baby's not gonna masturbate at five and seven respectively we're not doing this like we're not doing this like y'all even if i were to get a baby like i need them i want them i love children cuddling this little gen beta coming from millennial grandmama mama oh i'm a grandmama mama guys i'm a grandmama mama i'm a grandmama mama i'm not just being 42 years old with my first child grandmama mama grandmama mama here it is that a million a millennial is giving birth to gen beta when gen alpha kids are currently like i said their larynxes and vocal cords artificial intelligence voice voices like there is absolutely not much going on over there not much and the blame is to be shifted on their millennial and gen z parents who have increasingly become ungodly they have walked in rituals instead of a lifestyle and in so doing such a thing as that have imagined that this whole do what thy wilt for that is the whole of the law mindset of the earth is a-okay and also put these babies like little you know dinosaurs i don't know like vertebrates with like a bent neck in eye pads from the time they're like two years old they have made sure that these children who are now being raised by teachers have caused teachers oh poor little souls these poor souls that are not psychiatrists that have that deal with pediatrics or doctors that are dealing with pediatrics mm. but they're just teachers who have been trained how to teach children and really that's it yeah yeah they're walking out in their drones because these alpha kids are violent they're feral like cats you find that out your scratch at you hissing even though you're trying to rescue them and make them clean chop off their grubby nails and put them in your house in a small little cute very quaint cushy pillow that they will sleep in instead of in the wilderness but they out your hissing at you growling at you refusing to be touched by you because like i said they're feral these gen alpha kids are feral and so if they're feral what's going to become of gen beta feral kids are hard to take in a teacher's stride because that feral like what makes a cat feral let's talk about a cat because i have a cat what makes a cat feral please somebody tell me it is the fact that they, they, they're growing up in the wild for crying out loud but there are people who go on right ahead and take feral kittens put them in their houses and do what tame them teach them what human looking uh, human beings teach them how to live among who people teach them to do what use the kitty litter 
instead of insisting on going outside and putting their grubby paws in that soil. They teach cats to suddenly be content in the presence of human beings and not hide in a little corner in a new house. So you grab a hissing cat and you make it this like cute little thing that's on its belly every single time you walk into the room because it just loves you for being there. Who did that to the feral cat? A human being. A human being took a feral cat hissing <sighs> and said, no, I'm sorry. You're gonna sit in the house first and foremost you don't get to scratch my counter neither my fingers we're not doing that and you're going to use the kitty litter you're gonna use it you're gonna use it you're gonna use it until the cat thinks it's cute to honor you so i mean really just like training your dogs and your cats why are your kids feral exactly it's because you haven't trained them grab you go and you grab dogs and you teach them how to sit and yet you can't teach your kid how to sit in class when a teacher says sit proper like if at all you've taught a dog sit that word if it all somebody says sit spotty it'll sit at the sound of the word sit especially if you've taught spotty to sit when any human being tells it to sit and not just the owner itself that cat or that dog will sit and these kids ought to be taught how to respect teachers listen to them because their parents know and sorry these kids know that if at all they were to basically dishonor their own parents in this ecosystem gushubile it's over they're grounded never mind being grounded they might even get a whip in like a little bit of a whip a whip mm, the rod don't spare the child the rod that's what the bible says if your kids are feral at birth born dead in trespasses and sins and instance that their parents conceive them and that all their righteous works are like filthy rags what in the world tames them teach a child in the way that they should go and when they're older they will not depart from it it's you it's parents the responsibility of training children up is not on pastors it is not on who do you call this teachers it is on parents organized religion has spoiled christian parents into thinking they can delegate their responsibility of teaching a child godliness to sunday school something that happens between like once a week children of which often have a short attention span you are the one as the lead of your household that is supposed to train your child the scriptures to train your child godliness train your child jesus and sunday school is like a supplement it's like dessert at the end of a full meal it is not the main course it is supplementary at best it is a cherry on top at least it is a dessert but it is not the main course that is sunday school because a lot of times when you send these kids to sunday school they're going to be getting taught noah's ark the story of jonah being swallowed by a fishy rarely ever are they going to touch on the fact that look you're not that great okay because the human heart is to see full above all things and desperately wicked so there is really no end as to what wickedness you can achieve therefore you need to watch that heart of yours Ain't no Sunday school teacher gonna be out here telling a child that. You have got to teach your children true doctrine so they can be solid and find the story of Noah cute, adorable, lovely to watch and, and listen to, but also understand the reason why Noah even had to be put in that boat, in that ark. It's because the thoughts and intentions of mankind were evil continually and there was nothing but violence filling the earth and that the last days are going to be like it was in the days of Noah. They need to understand just the travesty of wickedness in the days of Noah that caused a holy God to kill the whole world except for eight people. The danger of that whole scenario must be thoroughly comprehended in the heart of a child that the right requisite amount of fear in their hearts might be employed for god the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy one brings understanding so sunday school is going to give a very fluffy version of noah's story very fluffy version of jonah's story the jonah story of which displays what happens when you disobey god displays what happens when a man decides he can run away from god god is sovereign you don't get to say no to him he can judge you he can swallow you and, and put you in the heart of the earth and so bad was Jonah's state as he was in the heart of the earth that it was described as similar to the death of Jesus and his three days in the heart of the earth too. That's what it is. Like that, that is, what is this? It's, it's a typology. The, the, the Jonah being in the heart of the fishy was used as a typology to describe Christ in the heart of the earth. And what happened with Christ being at the heart of the earth? He was initially killed. Like the guy was scourged. He was murdered. And then he went to set the, the captives free prisoners in the center of the earth. And the Jonah story is a typology of that whole thing. And then went out to preach to Nineveh thereafter. It's actually quite a dire story. It's one that displays just what in the world it is that the Lord does in order to bring people to himself. It's really quite serious. But your kids are just seeing it as this cute little story of fishing arms, gobbling a person. Like you gotta give the true impact of God's heart to children that they might understand his attributes. Fear him, however, with love.
You know what I'm saying? They need to be taught God's mercy, however, right next to God's judgment. So who's going to teach your kids that? Because ain't no Sunday school quite hitting the mark. I'm sorry. I've been a Sunday school teacher. I know how fluffy it is. I know. I know. But nah, you urge your trusting organized religion to teach your children. Organized religion to teach your children godliness. And you are trusting the organized schooling system to teach your children A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, and basically political ideology. Dogmas that are secular in nature that have got nothing to do with the Bible you believe in. Who in the world is going to entrench those principles? Homeschooling parents got it really good, but it was possible to do that or inspire that even in parents who take their children to school insofar as they were prepared to put in the time to basically recalibrate the skills that they tried to shift out of whack in school when they were there during the day. But a lot of millennial parents ain't got none such discipline in their core because they don't even understand what it's like to work in biblical Christianity. Millennials are... A generation that is living, I guess, in the last days in the great apostasy where most of them have abandoned entirely their dads and their mom's religion. They have abandoned their dads and their mom's Christianity. And so in so abandoning it, absolutely have got no, no time to be explaining Krensha, but what's the seriousness and the dire nature of what happened over there in the days of Noah? Exactly. Over and above, there being like a, a cute little boat with like a whole bunch of animals in it, looking all like, you know, child story. Mm over and above that childhood story, over and above that nursery rhyme, what in the world was the true dire state of the, of the earth at the time? You gotta do that. Your children have got to be basically bubble bursters and party poopers at Sunday school. Out you're putting even Sunday school teachers to shame by explaining the fact that the days of Noah were a dire time where the thoughts and intentions of men were evil continually and the men on the earth were full of violence. They were full of violence and the earth was no longer habitable or sustainable in the sight of God. And so he had to just kill them all. Let your kid be that kid that's going to make a Sunday school teacher realize that, Grandchap, why did you even take on a job as a Sunday school teacher when you can't even teach? You just decided that you want to serve in Sunday school because it looks really cute. You've never even studied the scriptures. You don't understand them. And yet you want to come and teach some children. You want to teach the most impressionable people on the earth. The kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And with you living a fornicating lifestyle, with you uh, just having this fluffy Christianity where you're so shallow, you lack humility in the worst way. You in and of yourself are not bearing fruit, but you're a Sunday school teacher. You're a Sunday school teacher. Let a kid then evangelize you because their parents are that responsible. Yeah. I found Sunday school quite a sham it was laughable but then again i'm in south africa i'm in south africa so of course right now the churches in this country are laughable just entirely gen millennials have been handing children over to be taught by the system but so too have all other generations but the uh difference now the disquieting matter presently is the fact that albeit having taught these children to do what they're doing sorry albeit having sent their children away to what appears to be boarding school to be taught by other human beings they don't realize at what generation and at what pivotal time in history they threw them to the system they threw children into the system during a time when the system was preparing the mark of the beast system the antichrist system the millennials threw their children to the teaching system during a time when it was so rebellious against god that gen alphas were essentially screwed. This thing that parents have been doing, ab abdicating, abdicating and derelicting their responsibility to raise children to the system, to teachers, have thrown some pretty irreverent and undisciplined children to teachers, causing these teachers to walk out of schools, unable to teach these unruly kids because parents have just abdicated their, their, their responsibility, their parenting roles. They've abdicated them. They've derelicted their duties as parents in favor of teachers raising them. Something that used to work when things were a little bit better, but things are not that good anymore. And so kids are just absolutely feral because their parents have not even tamed them at home. And so teachers are quitting jobs. Therefore, really and truly, God could perform a miracle in my belly and give me an Isaac in my geriatric millennial years. Very well. But why would he? Why would he? What is the point of a husband rocking up any minute now? And putting a baby in my stomach, what's the point? Indeed, I don't I don't deny I could fall pregnant at like 43. That's when my little sister was born to my mom. It's genetic, this whole geriatric pregnancy thing. It, it, it runs swimmingly in my family. It is still entirely feasible, but why is it worth it? Why should I give birth to a gen beta baby when gen alpha kids are basically AI robots walking around? What is the point? Because you, you literally broke gen Z's. But they were able to like limp around in a way that gen alpha are crawling. They're not even limping. Crawling. So what is going to become of Gen Beta? What? 
I want children, but I can't. Like, not right. Like, this here is not sustainable. The earth is over. Like, I, I apologize. Like, I'm going home, guys. There is nothing left. There's no earth. You have literally employed a scorched earth policy in schools, millennials. You have made Gen Alpha a scorched earth. You don't see it yet. But if the Lord does not rapture the body of Christ as a now, those Gen Alpha kids, you're going to see what in the world you did to them. They're still too young right now for you to see the real effects of what you've done to them. Too young. The oldest Gen Alpha, I believe, is 13 years old today. Yeah. Wait till they become teenagers. If you think Gen Zs are extreme, racy, and licentious, wait till you see what under heaven Gen Alpha are going to do. Not Gen Alpha, sorry, uh, Gen Beta. Yeah, Gen Alpha. Wait until you see how much worse even Gen Beta is going to be. It's already nasty. It's over. And like I said, when I first started out in my first part, that this whole ph phenomenon that I'm speaking about right now, that I'm communicating on the rooftops right now, if it were to continue, literally every last Gen Beta would take the mark of the beast. Because if I were to give birth to a Gen Beta baby now, what in the world under heaven is going to motivate that individual to stick to Jesus in a world that absolutely hates their God? There is no incentive to be godly. It is becoming increasingly disincentivized to choose Jesus. And the Lord is not going to let that continue to be a concern because children are going to be set up for failure from the very big get-go. It will be over for them before it even starts. They will be resisted before they can even get saved. Just like those Palestinians who want to turn to Christ but it's not safe. Your children are going to want God but it's not going to be safe. And while the Lord has got power because he's a miracle worker to save them anyway, why would he want them to live in a world that is so hostile against him? When the gospel is being shut out of, of every country, when nobody wants true biblical Christianity anywhere, then fine, you're kicking God out, let him then. Basically judge it until he can come back because it's his. He gets to run here. He is God. You can't say it's the pottery. What have you done to the potter? Like proper. You are pompous in so thinking such a thing as that. You are pompous to imagine you can tell the potter when saying, please, I don't like what you've done. If you don't want to worship your God, get out. Is that basic? And that's exactly what God is going to show you. That if you don't want to worship me, you don't get to water down children that get born, continuing to send them to hell with me being kicked out of the earth I made for you. The meek are the ones that will inherit the earth and delight themselves in abundant peace. My Christians, my believers, my remnant Jews, my elect Jews are the only ones that get to inherit the earth. And so if you want to kick them out or make their lives a living nightmare on an earth that I made for them, you go. And that's what the millennial reign of Jesus Christ is about. It's a restoration of basically how things ought to be. It's organized religion, however, in a responsible state. It is how it is that you were supposed to do it as a human race, but failed. It is a new example. And we're going there. And I can't wait to go there. I feel exhausted. I'm exasperated. But until such time that we get taken out, I will continue to speak these things. I can't possibly have children because why would I want to? Because I would be giving birth to Gen Beta babies and upon giving birth to them, essentially cause the ostracization and absolute hard knock persecution, therefore, the marginalization of my sons and daughters. I would cause my children a severity of sorrow in a world that hates God. But I would have been that staunch parent that taught my kid the dogma that they needed to be taught from very early. And if my kid holds on to Jesus and does not let go, uh, then my kid is going to end up severely abused in school, just bullied. And if I don't even take my kid to school, it doesn't matter. At some point, they have to grow up and work a job, don't they? They're going to struggle in the office. They're going to struggle. Like, literally, there is no future for Gen Beta, especially for godly Gen Betas. They, there's no future. Everybody's going to take the mark of the beast in that generation. If the Lord does not rapture the body of Christ now, with some Gen Zs, uh embracing the gospel and gen alphas a lot of them are still so innocent that they will likely just be accepted by god anyway that's what's going on with them you when that when the world is basically screwed absent of divine intervention then i guess divine intervention is what is needed is it not y'all cannot trust yourselves anymore because you threw children away like i said millennials you literally bombed entire creatures you done did that you are just dropping a nuke in a kindergarten you did it and you want to act as if though you did not do that to gen z and alpha uh, and then you force the woman that wanted to raise them better to have a gen beta baby in honey yo swabi millennials you will be the last generation to devastate the youth the lord is going to rescue these gen alphas and betas and z's through the tribulation through the rapture i already explained to you the child the child armies that are coming in the tribulation they're going to come in lamp-based living daylights out of you they're going to become cannibals they're going to be so unruly and mistakenly ominous and the lord will rescue them all for himself those who are alive at the end however of 
the tribulation at his second coming that's another video that i've already done and i've explained it please go check it out if you have any desire to do such a thing as that but seeing as i'm going home ultimately people are going to listen to me like a dead celebrity i just selling a whole bunch of albums but before then i'm going to be underestimated and treated like a whole bunch of trash then again you did try to make me give birth to gen beta so why wouldn't you treat me like trash when all your kids are gen alpha and gen z's it's because i'm always the sore thumb by my not i'm the thing that's different so different that I'm out here giving birth to gen beta babies as a millennial. You've made me a grandmama, mama. I'm not doing it. Even if I wanted to, why would God want to? Why? Ain't no need to go waste my womb, is there? No need. No need to go and waste all of my efforts in trying to raise a child up in the way that they should go. Guys, no need, no need. Mm. Because my kid is going to be persecuted like it's the days of Nero and they're Christians out here getting mauled away by lions at the Colosseum. I'm not trying to bring any child into any of that. I'm not doing it. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Crente. I hope you've been edified. Millennials, you who bomb crashes, I hope you've been reached. Signing out in Christ's name, bye.